being comes into life as a unique expression of source consciousness. Each being comes in with a unique essence. You can consider it kind of like an energetic signature. Now, part of what makes up that signature is the person's unique thoughts, unique feelings, unique needs, unique purpose within this greater picture of the overall universe at large. The socialization process, which parenting is really the core of, could be a process of allowing a child to unfold according to that blueprint that is their specific signature. However, socialization today, including the parenting process, very rarely actually facilitates this process of unfolding and most of the time acts in and of itself as an impediment to that unfolding. The people who are around you in your childhood look at you as if you are a raw substance that they can mold into whatever they feel like benefits you, but really, what they feel like benefits them. They tell you that certain things are acceptable, and if you are those things, you'll be loved and safe. They tell you that certain things are unacceptable, and if you are those things, you'll be rejected and unsafe. Anything that remotely resembles something that will make you unsafe or make you meet with disapproval is then something that you feel vulnerable about and you begin a process of splitting yourself. You put forward and develop only the things about you that make you loved and safe in the world. The rest you keep hidden. By doing this, you become distorted. It's a process of conditioned self-distortion. Your personality is in essence fake. I know that that's difficult for people to swallow. We don't want to swallow that. I mean, we think we know ourselves pretty well. But your personality is an amalgamation of the parts of you that kept you safe the parts of you that made you feel like you were good. What you do is you put those aspects forward to the world. That's what you're projecting in terms of a personality. And the rest, those things that didn't lead to safety, those things that didn't lead to closeness, you're going to hide from the world and ultimately suppress, reject, deny, and disown to the degree that you hide it from even yourself. This is how your truth was hidden from you. To understand more about this process, I encourage you to watch my video titled Fragmentation, the Worldwide Disease. One pattern that is a part of this socialization process. Hid your truth in a way that would guarantee that you would fight to keep it hidden. That pattern is a pattern of development and praise. I'm going to explain this pattern to you. Now, a parent goes into this process of parenting, or an adult caregiver goes into this process of raising a child, with a preconceived idea of what is good and what is right. Now, what this parent will do is determine what about a child is good and right, what they want that child to be. Remember that molding process I talked about? And they're going to pinpoint that thing in the child. They're going to seek to develop that thing in the child, and then they're going to praise the child for that thing. And whatever that thing is or isn't is highly dependent upon the culture that the person grew up in. The child's entire system is dependent upon this approval because it guarantees them closeness and safety with those he or she is dependent on. So the child will identify with and develop self-esteem relative to that thing which the adult sought to develop in him or her. With his or her self-esteem now wrapped up into that thing, the reowning of the suppressed, rejected, and denied opposite part now not only poses a threat to his or her safety, but also poses a threat to his or her self-esteem. With unsafety and shame as a barrier to cross in order to become authentic and discover the full truth of himself or herself, this person will fight for the skewed truth of themselves. This process is so subconscious, it's rather like implanting a Pavlovian response relative to your own internal character traits. And this keeps the actual truth of you hidden. What it does is it causes you to defend these distortions within yourself and not just defend the distortions. Defend the idea that these distortions are in fact not distortions, but are instead some genuine authentic expression of who you really are. When the reality couldn't be any further from that if you tried. Essentially because it's not the case. These are actual distortions. There's no possible way for you to lead an authentic enough life that you're genuinely fulfilled. So you can understand how this process works, I have come up with two examples for you. 
And yes, I drew them from real life. A girl who is raised in the cowboy culture is born a child who's naturally sensitive, naturally bubbly, and naturally feminine. But these traits are seen as weak and pathetic in a culture that values the concept of cowboy strong. This little girl is put into all kinds of situations in her childhood environment, both intentionally and unintentionally, that require the opposite trait of true grit. When she shows grit, she's safer and praised and admired and accepted. She is being conditioned by her environment and the people around her to be ashamed of, disown, and bury her bubbly, sensitive femininity. She is also being conditioned by her environment and the people around her that she is full of grit and that she should be proud that she is full of true grit. By the time this little girl grows up, the truth of her is going to be skewed. True grit is going to take up all that she sees about herself, whereas she's not going to see that bubbly, sensitive femininity as a part of herself at all. This woman is not only split and polarized internally, she is also distorted. And this distortion is going to cause her all kinds of pain in her life. Because of that distortion, all of her life choices are going to be based off of what? True grit. The man who becomes attracted to her and who she marries will love this about her and most likely be the kind of man who is not looking to take care of a woman at all because he wants a woman who can fend for herself. The career she chooses will be one that reinforces the need for true grit. She has been conditioned to see women who are feminine as weak and pathetic, but she will nonetheless become more and more jealous of them and the way they're taken care of and protected. She may struggle with infertility. Why? Because the tissues of her body are responding to true grit. For somebody to be in a situation where true grit is required, is that a safe environment or a not safe environment? Not safe environment. And so the message that the cells of her body are constantly getting is armor yourself be hard and be closed. The exact opposite energy from what creates fertility, which is receptivity and open and softness. Essentially, because of this distortion, progressively this woman is going to become more and more unhappy, more and more unfilled, because so many of those needs that are inherent to this essence that is buried within her are not going to be met, and the expression of that which she is can't ever exact itself into the world. So she is living an inauthentic life and making choices that she thinks are authentic to her, but are in fact authentic to her distortion. Second example, a boy grows up in a house where the, let's call it cultural belief, but definitely the belief of his parents, is that servitude is something that they are owed by their children in response for giving life to them in the first place. What these parents will do is ignore or discourage any interests that this little boy has that don't directly feed into their needs. Instead, they encourage and develop his helping skills. He is daddy and mommy's little helper. Whenever he helps mom with cleaning or helps dad with a project or helps them take care of a younger sibling or helps out on the farm, he is praised. When they talk about him to their friends, they say he's such a good help. His self-concept and his self-esteem and his sense of what keeps him safe is now completely embedded in the concept of being a helper. By this point, he has abandoned his other interests. By this point, he's either forgotten they existed, or he's come up with a story about how they're self-centered, and so he's not going to prioritize that. Just like in our first example, this is a being who is not going to end up happy and fulfilled because he is distorted. And as he thinks he's making these authentic choices, he's in fact making choices that are authentic to his distortion. This will be a man who chooses a career where he's helping someone else to succeed, regardless of whether or not that is inherent as a purpose to his own unique energy signature. He will most likely be so codependent that he will lose track of his dislikes and likes his preferences, his aversions. He'll lose track of his sense of self to the degree that eventually he ends up so lost, he feels like he's living someone else's life. Somehow, he just arrived in it. One thing to understand about authenticity, and you gotta listen because this is something most people don't actually understand about authenticity, is that there's this idea that 
what is authentic about you is always what is buried as opposed to what's put in front. But that's actually not the case. Genuine authenticity involves both polarities. When the process of socialization conditions a person to identify with and develop and wrap their self-esteem around one trait, it doesn't mean that trait is false and the one that is disidentified from and buried is the actual truth of them. Both traits are in fact a true part of them. For example, grit is an actual authentic element of the consciousness of the girl in our example. Helping is an actual trait that is present within the consciousness of the boy in our example. But so is bubbly femininity and sensitivity for the girl in our example. And so is unique, and we could call it self-serving, interests an element of the consciousness of the boy in our example. Both are true. It is simply that when one is fed and the other is denied, the person becomes inauthentic because their expression becomes polarized and skewed. They polarize and distort and become unaware of the full truth of themselves and make life choices that do not account for or accommodate the actual full truth of themselves. The process of integration will inevitably lead you to the awareness of these distortions so that you can pull yourself back into alignment. Chances are, if you're watching this video, your path of healing has already started to reveal these to you. One or several. <laughs> but I want to start you off with an exercise that can be considered like a Kickstarter for this process. I want you to make several lists. What these lists are going to be comprised of is what any and all of these adult caregivers in your childhood sought to develop and praise in you. So what you're going to do is you're going to write dad, right? And then you're going to write mom. These are two different lists. What traits did dad seek to develop and then praise in you? Then with mom, what traits did mom seek to develop then praise in you? These don't just have to be traits. They can also be things, you know, because like playing a sport isn't technically a character trait, but it is a thing that may have been developed and praised in you. I want you to do this relative to any adult caregiver that you interacted with in your childhood. I'm using mom and dad because those are the most common examples, but it could be grandma, could be teacher. I'm leaving that to you. Whoever had an influence <laughs> over your life. Once you have done that, you're going to do one more list. It's going to be environment. I want you to think about your childhood environment. And I want you to write a list of what that environment conditioned into you. For example, one person might write a list under dad like bravery, studying law, football, unemotionality, logic, honor, selflessness, hard work, etc. And under mom, kindness, academics, hard work, honor, gratitude, selflessness, putting family above myself, etc. And under environment, this person might write things like hard work, selflessness, academic success, duty to elders, etc. Now looking at this list, See if you can feel how that conditioning may have distorted you. What might it have caused you to reject, deny, and disown in you? What might it have caused you to develop and exaggerate? How might that have negatively affected your life? How might it be negatively affecting your life now? For example, the person in our example here that I just listed has found out that what all of these lists has in common, mom, dad, and childhood environment is hard work. Looking at himself, he can see that he's really distorted. He has wrapped his self-esteem entirely around hard work and his sense of safety and security within the community and life into hard work. What this means is that he has gotten rid of his spontaneity, gotten rid of his fun, gotten rid of relaxation. This is not a guy who thinks of himself as a fun guy. This is not a guy who allows himself relaxation because he's terrified of being lazy. He derives so much of his self-esteem from being a hard worker and nothing like, and therefore superior to, all those people in his life that are downright lazy. But here's the question. Is this a happy man? You guys know the answer to that question is no. 
He might realize that this distortion that he was conditioned into has made it so he doesn't do things that come easy to him. He only chooses to do things that don't come easy to him. He might realize that his body's breaking down and that he has back issues because he runs himself into the ground working all hours of the day. He may realize that he attracts people who are lazy because they know he's going to do all the work for them. He may see he doesn't spend enough time with his loved ones because it feels unproductive. When a person is conditioned to wrap up their safety and self-esteem in one thing, while at the same time associating shame and unsafety with another thing to such a degree that they are rejecting and disowning it to the degree that they are split and also distorted, they will stay distorted and continue to fight for the distortion until the point where the pain of that condition of splitting and distortion becomes so intense that they just can't take being out of alignment anymore. But the good news is it is more than possible to bring yourself back into a state of alignment. It's more than possible to recognize these elements of yourself that you have split off from, suppressed, rejected, denied, and disowned. It is more than possible for you to end this distortion within yourself. And one of the best ways to do this is actually parts work, or I should say, what many people today are calling parts work. <laughs> when you engage in this process, you're bringing yourself into alignment with your true essence so that your embodiment can be a reflection of that original blueprint. Talk about living in your purpose. Talk about having your needs actually met. <laughs> Talk about knowing your role in the greater universe at large. To understand how to do parts work, watch my video titled, What is Parts Work? and How to Do Parts Work. And even though it makes perfect sense to be afraid of this process, I don't want you to forget that bringing yourself into alignment and out of that distortion that you've been conditioned into is not going to lead you to all the unsafety and the shame that you were conditioned to believe that it would. In fact, when you have that fear that's telling you that undistorting yourself is going to lead you to unsafety and shame, that is, in fact, just the conditioning that created the distortion in the first place talking. Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to share it, like it, and also subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this. But I want to personally thank you for taking the initiative and having the bravery to step into the space of awareness, not only for yourself, but for the benefit of those around you.